LA This Week. I'm Rasha Goel. Up next, more on an outreach program with a personal touch to help people who are homeless. I'm Anna Marcos, a blowout and grito celebration as city leaders fight for immigrants' rights. More on all the party details coming up. More than 20 Emmy-nominated television shows are being honored for filming in Hollywood and staying in Hollywood. I'm Gil Reyes with more on the push to keep these productions in the entertainment capital of the world. Hello and welcome to LA This Week. Thanks for joining us, I'm Yana Kay. You've probably heard the news that LA will be hosting the 2028 Olympics. It's a big deal for the city, but with a price tag estimated at more than $5 billion, can Los Angeles afford it? As Gil Reyes reports, city leaders are confident that the games will pay for themselves and a lot more. Paris 24, Los Angeles 28. It is now official. In the Olympic Games' first ever two-city deal, both Paris and Los Angeles win. The formal announcement made after the Olympic Committee vote in Lima, Peru. Mayor Eric Garcetti was there, so were his wife, Amy Elaine Wakeland, and several city council members. Days later, it was back to Los Angeles to address Angelinos. Here in this city, which is the most diverse, not just in the United States, but in the world and in human history, where we have hundreds of languages, uh, over 115 countries of origin, 39 countries with their largest population outside their uh, home country. We know every athlete has a home field advantage when they come home to Los Angeles. You're a, a city uh, which is uh, inspiring at uh, the same time. And uh, you are a, a city which is vibrant and is forward uh, looking. We need to fix traffic, we need to build housing, we need to address homelessness, we need to do those things for LA. But with the Olympics coming, trust me, I remember this from 84, we're all going to want to put in even extra time, um, extra attention, and work with our federal and state partners to accelerate that. So maybe more rail lines can get open, uh, more housing can get built. Let the games begin again. I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. The International Olympic Committee has also promised huge cash advances for Los Angeles, including $160 million to fund youth sports programs. Why should you as an Angelino care about your local neighborhood councils? Well, they may affect your life and the issues in your neighborhood more than you think. Anna Marcos has more on their biggest yearly event, the Congress of Neighborhoods. You know all those neighborhood cleanups that make your street look good? Or that new mural that went up? or the city finally acting on your concerns about overdevelopment, well, your neighborhood council probably had a part in it. Most neighborhoods in L.A. now have one, and they're made up of residents like you. This yearly event, the Congress of Neighborhoods, brings them all together at City Hall. So welcome to your City Hall, serving up democracy since 1928, a great place that we come in this kind of temple of democracy to hear each other, to hopefully listen to each other, to occasionally yell at each other. County Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas helped create neighborhood councils in 1999. It is about the common good that essentially connects us with the notion of what democracy is fundamentally about. This is the vehicle by which the city is really empowering neighborhoods. This year's theme, Celebrating Our Diversity, provided a focus for many of the workshops. Those who took part included old and young, veterans as well as newcomers. Just everything that kind of happened with the election and made me just want to be more active in my community. It's great. I like it very much, very informative. My name is Lily Larson. I'm 17 and I've been an activist since I was five. There is no age too young to get involved in your community. Let's come together and make change for the highest good for our neighborhoods, for our city, our state, our country, and our planet. A day of inspiration, networking, education, and maybe a few sign-ups of new members for the city's 97 neighborhood councils. I'm Anna Margos for LA This Week. For more information on joining a neighborhood council in your community, visit empowerla.org forward slash councils. 
Turning now to our homeless crisis as city leaders expand on an outreach program, hoping that more boots on the ground combined with a personal connection will help more people who are homeless get the help they need. Rasha Goel has more. Jeanette Boyer, a clinical case manager, is taking her services to the streets of the fashion district. She is part of a team to help homeless individuals. Boyer tells us about her experience when talking to this man. It's mostly just being, you know, very nice and open and seeing how they respond. Um, he seemed kind of uh, concerned because this was his tent over here that we were all kind of around his space. And so I kind of explained to him what we're doing here and then he seemed interested in some services. It's all part of expanding outreach to individuals of the homeless community to get them the help they need. Councilman Jose Huizar says the first responders to help these individuals should not be the LAPD and LAFD as the issue goes beyond what they are able to provide. If we look at the overall demographics of homeless individuals in Los Angeles, about a third have mental health issues that go unaddressed. This expanded outreach is being funded by Measure H, which is aimed to combat homelessness in L.A. It involves direct interaction between professionals and homeless individuals. We have primary health care, behavioral health care, substance abuse um, services, as well as people who with lived experience, formerly homeless individuals on these teams that are going out on the streets every single day and making contact with homeless individuals with the goal of bringing them into housing and services. This program is similar to another program on Skid Row known as C3, a city county community outreach program. The homeless individual sees, sees these individuals every day and they start building the trust over not days, maybe weeks, maybe months, but eventually they'll say, hey, yeah, I trust you now. I'll take your word. I'll go to that shelter. These teams are part of a larger countywide strategy. Currently, there are 25 teams, but officials say by the end of the year, there will be 36 teams deployed throughout L.A. County. In downtown Los Angeles, I'm Rasha Goel for L.A. This Week. Over North Hollywood, individuals who are homeless also got some much-needed help and care as Councilmember Paul Krikorian's Homeless Connect Day brought city and county agencies together at the North Hollywood Community Center. Anna Marcos takes us there. Homeless Connect Day draws hundreds of people who are on the streets for a little TLC, a warm welcome, warm food, and maybe, if they're lucky, a warm place to call home. I found out that they was trying to help the homeless get off the streets, so I decided to come. Housing, I think I'm getting something. I've got a Section 8 voucher coming. Well, I had an aneurysm right here, and it, I was in a coma. When I came out a year later, I had nothing. You know, I appreciate the housing thing, but if I can't take my dog with me, I'm not, I, I'll, I'll, we'll stay out on the street. Uh, I go around helping and volunteering and speaking to a lot of the people because a lot of them know me from the streets. So I go around trying to give them encouragement and letting them know that, that being homeless is, doesn't mean you're hopeless. Council member Paul Krikorian started the event, which takes place every few months. Local city and county agencies all take part. And this time around, the North Hollywood Community Center plays host. We created the Homeless Connect Day concept uh, to try to address that specific idea of uh, going to a person, not a statistic, but a person, and identifying what it is that that person needs and then getting them connected this is literally a one-stop shop. Not only can homeless residents get the usual food, housing, and medical services, but how about a state ID card from the DMV? I need an ID of any kind. And as Homeless Connect Day winds down, a lot more people will leave well-fed and well-groomed. Some even get a yoga mat for a little R&R, &R, and a few make it off the street. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week. L.A. Family Housing, one of the lead organizations in the event, helps house more than 6,000 people a year. Switching gears now to the current state of L.A.'s entertainment industry, thanks to film and TV tax credits, a lot of productions have returned to L.A., but local leaders want more, and they want to increase the current $330 million in tax incentives to half a billion dollars. Gil Reyes reports from a Tinseltown gala, where local leaders say L.A. is worth it. 
The Made in Hollywood Awards shine a spotlight on Emmy-nominated programs produced in California. 23 shows in all this year, including Veep and Jay Leno's Garage. That's a record number of locally produced programs honored. That money that is being spent here on these productions is going right back into our local economy. It's also helping our small businesses, our dry cleaners, our restaurants, our caterers. Our Hollywood Councilman Mitch O'Farrell co-hosts the gala. He says $330 million in California film and TV tax credits have helped keep productions local since 2015. Before that, heartache. Many industry pros were forced to pack up and leave for other states to work, sometimes leaving their families. Among the honorees happy to be home, cast and crew of the HBO miniseries Big Little Lies. It's mostly shot in the L.A. area. There's nothing like going home in your own bed after a 14-hour day or a 15-hour day or a 12-hour day, you know? Nothing like it with your family and, you know, be able to be on the weekends and see your kids. Now, it is important to note that these tax incentives are set to expire in about three years. That's why L.A. City Council member Mitch O'Farrell and L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti are pushing hard to extend these programs like a blockbuster Hollywood sequel. As the mayor has said publicly, uh, he would like to see an increase in the in the cap uh, up to $500 million. Kevin James from the mayor's office of film and TV says the city is also helping local productions by allowing free filming in city-owned buildings and not just City Hall. Because of the old Community Redevelopment Act, some properties have reverted back to the city and are available. Uh, one example I'll give you is a, a Warner Brothers feature called Lights Out. Great film, very successful financially. It was filmed entirely in the city of Los Angeles, and the old Highland Park Bank building uh, was the, the prime location for that film shoot. They paid no use fee for that. The city committed to playing an award-winning supporting role in keeping productions in and around the world's entertainment capital. In Hollywood, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. City leaders hope to work with colleagues in the state legislature to get that additional $170 million in tax credits approved. Well, they say if you build it, they will come. And as Gil Reyes reports, they came all right to a job fair aimed at finishing a series of projects to accommodate LA's unprecedented growth spurt. This job fair in the West Adams District relates pretty well to what Horatio Gordon sees happening all around him. I think it's a wonderful thing, especially when I see that there's funds being allocated for construction projects. Everywhere around the city you go, you see construction everywhere, and now they're allowing some of the people from the community to get in and learn construction ca careers. Look around. Crews are building up in downtown and in Hollywood, while across the tracks, L.A. Metro has 40 years of transportation projects down the road following the passage of Measure M. Fly on over to LAX and you'll see construction plans taking off, part of a $14 billion renovation. Hopes are to find some of the workers to complete these projects at the Public Jobs for the People Fair. The job fair at First AME Church, hosted by Council Member Marquise Harris Dawson. There's no reason for anybody in the city of Los Angeles to not have a good paying job that's meaningful to all of us who live here. 3,000 jobs available just for this day, but Council Member Marquise Harris Dawson estimates 1 million new jobs will be available over the next decade from infrastructure projects alone. In South LA, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. Many of the jobs are being offered by private companies working on public contracts. Call it the Mexican 4th of July. Mexico's El Grito celebration marks a high point for Mexicans on both sides of the border, and city leaders help make it one of the biggest parties of the year. Anna Marcos takes us there. Viva Mexico! The El Grito is followed by the ringing of the bell. City leaders do the honors as Mexican Americans celebrate the anniversary of Mexico's war for independence. And for the city, this is a major, major bash. I'm here to celebrate part of my culture. I, we are Mexican and American. Apparently, you're never too young to learn about Mexican independence, even if you can't quite pronounce it. Independence? Mexican independence. Say. So you're wearing part of it on your hat? Yes.
The Mexican skirts twirl, the flags wave, and the dancing is contagious. Everyone definitely out to have a good time. I'm dressed as Frida Kahlo because she's the very famous artist and, and, um, and she's Mexican. Yeah, and she's Mexican and a very good fan. This year's El Grito party is bittersweet as it comes on the heels of the Trump administration's crackdown on immigrants. For immigrants who are the heart of the community, we will fight hate in Washington. This is where love is. Some of the so-called dreamers, immigrants who came to this country illegally at a young age, came on stage holding hands in solidarity. They've been able to stay in this country with the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals policy, and they hope the Trump administration lets them stay. I hope he understands that we are part of this country, that our roots are also here. I just want to say that the Mexicans, we are a wonderful people. Council member Gil Cedillo helped put on the party. We caught up with him earlier in the day. It's been a tough year for our nation, a lot of divisiveness, a lot of uh, talk about hate and, and deportations and walls. We want to celebrate. And celebrate they do with sombreros out and dancing shoes on. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week. The celebration also included a family fun zone, community resource booths, and even free legal consultations. One nonprofit teams with L.A. City Libraries to help save arts education. Gil Reyes reports on a national after-school program that's finally arrived on the West Coast. Grade school kids in South Los Angeles receiving free arts education from what's billed as America's largest art school. And there's no tuition. It's a wonderful arts program for kids in our libraries where they'll be working with uh, resident artists. Uh, you know, we think of the library as, of course, an education organization, an information organization, but the library is really a, a cultural institution, and it is indeed an arts institution. LA City librarian John Sabo talks to us from Junipero Serra Branch, site of the West Coast launch of Project Art. Project Art is an after school program that began in New York City. Its goal to provide free arts education to underserved kids at neighborhood libraries. We provide the art supplies, the curriculum, uh, we give an exhibition at the end of the year. Uh, we recruit, train, hire, and pay the teachers as well. It immediately struck me as a very efficient and effective program to tackle this issue of declining arts education in our public schools. An estimated four million grade school students don't have access to arts education because school districts can't afford it. LA City libraries taking part in this program include Junipero Cerro Branch in South Los Angeles, Hyde Park Branch, Cypress Park Branch, and Washington Irving Branch in Arlington Heights. Enrollment is first come, first served, Register your child at projectart.org. I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. The program also helps prevent latchkey kids from going home to empty houses while their parents are still at work. Project Art is also taking place at libraries in New York City, Detroit, Miami, Chicago, and Pittsburgh. A four-month carnival of Latin American art is wowing crowds from Santa Barbara to San Diego and several points in between. Gil Reyes reports from the opening reception for Pacific Standard Time, LA, LA. Performers in downtown's Grand Park help launch a cultural extravaganza spanning hundreds of miles. Time for Pacific Standard Time, LA, LA, where even the information kiosks are works of art. So we want to produce a space that felt enclosed, that you were entering into kind of a sanctuary space. At the same time, you wanted them to have visual and spatial access to all the other activities in the site. We are at the kickoff of Pacific Standard Time, LA, LA, and its focus on Latin American and Latino art. Literally dozens of venues to choose from all across Southern California for you and your family to enjoy. Ranging from Santa Barbara, Palm Springs, San Diego, and obviously most of the art institutions in Los Angeles are participating. Venues just in Los Angeles include the Getty Center, Hammer Museum, LACMA, and MOCA. 
People could read up on all of it at this information pavilion. Close by, postcards like this one promoting Afro-Brazilian art at UCLA's Fowler Museum are handed out. Each card has a different museum on it and a different um, image, art image, and uh, we are giving people the opportunity to collect them. Plan out your day and create your own artwork by building a House of Cards planner. You can choose to learn about Chilean-born video artist Juan Downey or radical female artists of the 1960s. Or why not visit both exhibits in one day? Dancers, singers, caricaturists, they're there too. This collaboration is led by the Getty. And it's political pressures that put borders around people. And, and uh, works of art build bridges and not walls, we like to say. And I think this is going to be evident in great, uh, to a great extent, to a specific standard time, L.A., L.A. The events run through January. In Grant Park, I'm Gil Reyes for L.A. This Week. For information on all the exhibits, dates, and locations, log on to PacificStandardTime.org. Well, Councilmember Jose Huizar seeks to boost the budget for the 6th Street Bridge Park to make sure residents get what they want. Does your local park make the grade? Find out in a new report. And a Chatsworth Park closed for a decade is back in business. All these stories in City B. LA City Council Member Jose Huizar introduced a motion during a City Council meeting to secure $2 million from the Adelante Eastside CRA funds for the new 12-acre 6th Street Bridge Park that will sit below the new 6th Street Bridge in Boyle Heights and downtown Los Angeles' Art District. It's slated to open in 2020. The motion is part of Huizar's commitment to securing an additional $6 million to raise the bridge's park design and construction budget from $23 million to $29 million to ensure that the public space on both sides of the river have design elements that the Boyle Heights and Arts District communities support, such as soccer fields, basketball courts, water splash pads, dog parks, and event space. LA City Controller Ron Galperin released a report card for city parks, giving poor scores for the maintenance and cleanliness of restrooms, but better marks for playgrounds, trails, and gyms. A survey of 3,700 park users also found that cleanliness and safety concerns keep them from using the community parks more often. The report card graded 40 of the city's 95 designated community parks. The city manages a total of 444 parks ranging in size. Together we can make sure that our parks be the very best that we all want them to be. Ten years after it was closed because of lead contamination, Chatsworth Park South on Devonshire Street has been reopened. The property used to house a skeet shooting and trap range. In 1978, a portion of the park was developed with a recreation center, parking lots, and other outdoor features, but was closed in 2008 after environmental investigation found remnants of lead shot and clay pigeons contained hazardous substances. The park has been cleaned up and redesigned to include natural landscape features, bioswales, trails, new equipment for children's play areas, and open space. It's an opportunity for young people to help bring something positive to their community. Rasha Goel has more on how a group of students is doing just that. For Youth, by Youth is the main theme of this fun-filled festival that was recently held outside of the Boyle Heights City Hall. The event was a collaboration between Councilmember Jose Huizar's office, Boyle Heights Youth, and other local organizations. It's a message that we're sending our young people. It's about telling them that we care about them, that we're here, and we could do better if we work together as a community. The festival was planned by 20 high school students who met every week for two months. This was a very interactive and wonderful experience for me to actually become a part of something and actually bring something to the youth and plan it out. Boyle Heights has been known in the past to be a gang concentrated area. Over the years it has changed, but events like this, the councilman says, helps give the youth a chance to make positive choices. We're proud of our young people and we're trying to do as much for them so that they have opportunities. We understand that youth sometimes really want to go out there, but they just don't find the resources, which is why we helped out today. We brought in these activities and along with it, each agency was partnered up with the activity and they were able to really connect with it. What made you want to be an author and want to write? Yeah, well, um, 
for me, I I dreamt of being an author. Like I, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in the library and I would look at the bookshelves and I wouldn't see any Latino names up in there except for a couple. They hope this is the beginning of many free and family-friendly block parties. I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. Travel back in time to experience what it was like to be a pioneer, celebrate Latin culture during the Festival of the Americas, and get moving to the beat of the Watts Towers Day of the Drum Festival. All this in this week's Things to Do. Chatsworth Pioneer Day is a fun family festival with loads of old-time activities, food, games, and museum exhibits that feature Chatsworth equestrian heritage and pioneer families. Activities include a bake sale, blacksmith, wood carvers, leather crafts, panning for gold, veteran quilt display, rock chippers, beekeeping, telegraph station, butter churning, and more. It all takes place on Sunday, October 1st at 11 a.m. at the Homestead Acre of Chatsworth Park South. Kick off Hispanic Heritage Month by celebrating at LA's Festival of the Americas. Hosted at La Plaza du Cultura in downtown LA, this all-day event is an opportunity for both Latinos and lovers of Latin culture to honor the diversity of North and South American cultures. Festival highlights include local and international cuisine, Latin-inspired drinks, traditional Latin games, and international and regional music. The festival takes place Sunday, October 1st from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. at La Plaza de Cultura in downtown L.A. For more, visit LAFestivalOfTheAmericas.com. A lineup of world-class musicians, singers, dancers, and drummers will hit the stage for the 36th annual Watts Towers Day of the Drum Festival. It's a celebration of music, arts, and people coming together. It's a festival not to be missed and takes place Saturday, September 30th and Sunday, October 1st at the Watts Towers in L.A. For more, visit wattstowers.org. And that's a look at some things to do. Well, that's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kane from all of us here at LA This Week. Thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week.